So Monarch E is a large randomized phase three trial that I think uh, our viewers are very much aware of that looked at the CDK4-6 inhibitor abemaciclib in combination with endocrine therapy in patients with high risk early stage hormone receptor positive HER2 negative breast cancer. Uh, and in this uh, study, patients were eligible in a big cohort cohort one, and then about 9% of the enrolled patients were in a small cohort that was exploratory cohort two. So in cohort one, you had to have one to three positive nodes, and then uh, at least one of two, there were two options, two additional factors, so grade three histology or tumor greater than five, five centimeters or greater. And then you could have four or more positive nodes and anything and that was fine. So that's cohort one. Uh, cohort two were patients who had one to three positive nodes, but they couldn't have any of the other things. So they couldn't have the grade three or the et cetera, but they had to have a key 67 of 20% or greater that was centrally confirmed. So that's actually a really interesting cohort and there's a lot more follow-up that that was a later cohort that was enrolled. But this is now um, about four years of follow-up on Monarch E that was presented by Stephen Johnston and is published already, same day it was presented. So that's very exciting for us, I think, to have the data available right away. Um, and this is really important because there's been a lot of questions. Penelope B looked at palbociclib in high-risk early stage breast cancer. Question about the risk, how we determine risk, but and, and maybe the population wasn't as high a risk population early, but they only gave a year of palbo. And what we saw was the curves were separated and then over time they came together. So there was a big question in everybody's minds about whether or not two years of abemaciclib would still be effective at four years because maybe it only works while you're giving it and then the effect would be lost. So uh, at this time, at four years, almost essentially all of the patients are off study drug, 99 plus percent, right? Nobody's still taking the first two years of abemaciclib. So it's a much more mature analysis. And the factors for eligibility actually um, were focused on a population of patients that has a relatively higher risk of earlier relapse. You know, we know that very slow growing, lower risk disease, you can relapse at 10, 15 years. They really focused on an earlier relapse risk population by those criteria that I just went through. Um, and what we saw was so striking, actually. So in, instead of the difference narrowing, the difference favoring abemaciclib is increasing over time. It's very cool. It went from like two to four to 6%, a little over 6%, absolute difference in invasive disease-free survival and distant recurrence-free survival. So that what that really suggests that, that there's a carryover effect after you finish the two years, you're still seeing benefit and you know benefit out to four years and that the benefit is widening over time. So that's the first time we've seen anything like this with a targeted agent outside of trastuzumab and certainly in the hormone receptor positive population. There are no new safety signals, of course, because everybody's off drug. There's no like carryover safety effects. You don't still have diarrhea when you stop the drug, it goes away. So that's very comforting. Um, and the key 67 subset, again, these differences are widening over time. So key 67 is a bad prognostic factor in hormone receptor positive positive disease, but it doesn't predict the benefit of abemaciclib. Both groups, low and high key 67, benefited from abemaciclib. So this is great data. We hope that abemaciclib is available to patients who have high risk disease in most places in the world, because it's clearly changing the outcome for patients with hormone receptor positive breast cancer. And we're waiting for more events, which thankfully are very slow coming in to get a mature overall survival analysis.